Welcome back to this new inspirational video. Today we're gonna go on with chapter 2 from the book The Science of Being Great. And it's called Heredity and Opportunity. Now if you've been one of those people that felt like because of the past, because of not having good degrees in school or whatever, that means that you're stuck. Well, this chapter is going to remind you that you don't have to be stuck. You don't really have to feel inferior. You can overcome it all. You can actually create a wonderful future for yourself, regardless of all those aspects, if you but learn how. And that's exactly what we're gonna be learning. Wallace went on to say, you are not barred from attaining greatness by heredity, no matter who or what your ancestors may have been or how unlearned or lowly their station the upward way is open for you. There's no such thing as inheriting a fixed mental position. No matter how small the mental capital we receive from our parents, it may be increased. No man is born incapable of growth. Heredity counts for something. We are born with subconscious mental tendencies, as, for instance, a tendency to melancholy or cowardice or to ill temper. But all these subconscious tendencies may be overcome. When the real man awakens and comes forth, he can throw them off very easily. When the real man awakens, right? The average person might suddenly be like, what does that even mean? When the real man awakens? Yeah, what we're talking about is when the power of consciousness, when the awareness dawns upon you of your spiritual self, which is your imaginative self, the one that controls the imagination. When he awakens inside of you, he can throw off all these physical limitations that you thought were holding you back that's the beauty that's even what scriptures is trying to show us through the teachings of jesus christ now he went on to say that nothing of this kind need keep you down if you have inherited undesirable mental tendencies you can eliminate them and put desirable tendencies in their place an inherited mental trait is a habit of thought of your father or mother impressed upon your subconscious mind you can substitute the opposite impression by forming the opposite habit of thought. You can substitute a habit of cheerfulness for a tendency to despondency. You can overcome cowardice or ill temper. Now this here is very important what he briefly wrote about those mental traits we inherit from our father and mother. And this is why there's such a huge, well, group of people who all live, how to put it in the best way? When you are growing up in a family where nobody's rich necessarily, like multi-millionaires, it's, it's obvious why we then have issues believing that we can become one. It's because we weren't raised to believe that we can be it. If your parents were multi-millionaires, for example, you would believe you could become it as well. Because you've seen it, you've been raised in that environment. And it doesn't matter if our parents are one or not. That's not the point, but it just shows us that the way we've been raised has a huge influence on how we operate as adults. So if we're not operating in a way that we would like to operate, then we're going to have to do what Wallace just suggested. We're going to have to change our own habit of thought. We're going to have to start thinking along lines of that we can succeed, can get rich, even if our whole family has never done it. It doesn't matter. We can outgrow all these old uh, thought patterns, those negative and limiting beliefs that we might have inherited. Now, of course, we don't want to blame our parents for anything. They gave us the best they could, but it's up to us to improve our lives for ourselves. Now, Wallace went on to say that heredity may count for something, an inherited confirmation of the skull. There is something in phrenology, if not as much as its exponents claim. It is true that the different faculties are localized in the brain, and that the power of a faculty depends upon the number of active brain cells in its area. A faculty whose brain area is large is likely to act with more power than one whose cranial section is small. Hence, persons with certain conformations of the skull show talent as musicians, orators, mechanics and so on. It has been argued from this that a man's cranial formation must, to a great extent, decide his station in life, but this is an error. It has been found that a small brain section with many fine and active cells gives as powerful expression to faculty as a larger brain with coercion cells, and it has been found that by turning the principle of power into any section of the brain with the will and purpose to develop a particular talent, the brain cells may be multiplied indefinitely. Any faculty, power or talent you possess, no matter how small or rudimentary, may be increased. You can multiply the brain cells in this particular area until it acts as powerfully as you wish. 
it is true that you can act most easily through those faculties that are now most largely developed. You can do with the least effort the things which come naturally. But it is also true that if you will make the necessary effort you can develop any talent. You can do what you desire to do and become what you want to be. When you fix upon some ideal and proceed as here and after directed, all the power of your being is turned into the faculties required in the realization of that ideal. More blood and nerve force go to the corresponding sections of the brain and the cells are quickened, increased and multiplied in number. The proper use of the mind of man will build a brain capable of doing what the mind wants to do. This is especially powerful and helpful to anyone who still doubts that they can achieve what they want. They think, oh, I didn't have the education, I didn't have the talent, I don't have this or that. They always only think of what they don't have and therefore they can't succeed. But if we just learn that we can increase the power within ourselves for what we want, if we magnify the desire, then everything we need will come to us. We develop it along the way as well. As Wallace said, the brain does not make the man, the man makes the brain. Your place in life is not fixed by heredity, nor are you condemned to the lower levels by circumstances or lack of opportunity. The principle of power in man is sufficient for all the requirements of his soul. No possible combination of circumstances can keep him down, if he makes his personal attitude right and determines to rise. The power which formed man and purposed him for growth also controls the circumstances of society, industry and government, and this power is never divided against itself. The power which is in you is in the things around you, and when you begin to move forward, the things will arrange themselves for your advantage, as described in later chapters of this book. Man was formed for growth, and all things external were designed to promote his growth. No sooner does a man awaken his soul and enter on the advancing way than he finds that not only is God for him, but nature, society and his fellow man are for him also, and all things work together for his good, if he obeys the law. Poverty is no bar to greatness, for poverty can always be removed. Martin Luther, as a child, sang in the streets for bread. Linnaeus, the naturalist, had only forty dollars with which to educate himself. He mended his own shoes and often had to beg meals from his friends. Hugh Miller, apprenticed to a stonemason, began to study geology in a quarry. George Stephenson, inventor of the locomotive engine and one of the greatest of civil engineers, was a coal miner working in a mine when he awakened and began to think. James Watt was a sickly child and was not strong enough to be sent to school. Abram Lincoln was a poor boy. In each of these cases we see a principle of power in the man that lifts him above all opposition and adversity. There is a principle of power in you. If you use it and apply it in a certain way, you can overcome all heredity and master all circumstances and conditions and become a great and powerful personality. That is the end of chapter 2. And you know, I just wanted to briefly mention here that this whole concept about developing the talents that you need in order to succeed, well, that applied to me as well, and it's applying to you as well, right now, already. But in general, we've always had dreams and goals that at first we may have not thought we could have, but then we got them in the end because we wanted to have them. Now with the bigger things in life, we're reluctant to believe the same power can help us make it happen. But it's true. In the past, as a child, for example, there were times you wanted something, you really wanted it, and then you got it. Well, we have to have that same intensity now as adults as well. If we want to grow in a better direction, we must really want that improvement for ourselves, and then we're going to get it. It's the same with me and running this channel. For years, I thought about creating an inspiration channel, but I never really did it. But then I reached the point I knew I really want to do this. I'm going to do it, and now it happened, and now we keep working on it. It's been a year by now, and I'm just going to keep going along for maybe, well, decades to come. Depends on how long I'll be here physically. But I'm determined to keep doing it for how long I'll be here on planet Earth. It doesn't really matter. At least I'm on purpose and doing what I want. And it's true. The skills, inspiration and things that I need in order to put together these videos came to me as I made that decision. Because before I made the decision, I didn't really have any ideas yet or felt like I was talented enough, if you even want to call it that, to share people, powers of the mind, to talk about it with people. But I developed these confidence in myself and skills for now 
on how to do it and how to go about this. I developed the skill to talk from the heart, to just talk from my own nature, from my own soul nature. It sounds kind of weird perhaps, but that's how I speak when I talk about the mind. I know it comes from within because I'm really passionate about this and know how powerful it is and how it can help anyone. And yet I was raised in a family, for example, where nobody does this. Nobody has been doing this sort of work. So for a while, of course, I also struggled with that idea that maybe I could not do it or because of my upbringing, it wasn't in alignment with the dream that I had. But you see, now I've already reached the point that I'm just going to obey my own dreams and let them flow with and through me and forget about the past and my upbringing and what my parents might have taught me. Because most of our parents in most cases simply teach us to get a job and to just settle with that and not dream so big, not be so unrealistic. All these little details need to be overcome so we can find our true powers once and for all. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to receive inspirational videos on a regular basis. And with that being said, dear viewer, never forget that we are the dreamers.